Hi everyone, so this is my video regarding um, the new Seiko Presage cocktail time. Um, it's a blue version and since I've had the watch for a couple of months now I decided it's time to, to share some thoughts with you and I'll be giving you five things you need to know about this watch in this video. Um, maybe this video comes a little bit late as it is already Christmas time and some of you might have already bought the watch for Christmas but some, some other um, people might be still making their minds so hopefully I'll be able to um, help you with this. Okay, uh, so first thing, I'm starting off with the positioning of the watch. As I've heard uh, uh, numerous places on the internet and I've read on numerous places how this watch is basically a luxury watch for a fraction of the price. Uh, it's like you pay five hundred dollars for for the watch, and you get a luxury watch equivalent. Uh, so, uh, ju just a, a couple of uh, things you need to know about this statement. Uh, although the watch is extremely nice, uh, I wouldn't call the watch a luxury uh, item, and I'll give you the reasons for this. Um, let me just zoom out a bit. Uh, so, firstly, starting off with the case. As you can see, the case is uh, very nicely polished. Not nothing really wrong with the case. However, however, uh, the overall build quality of the watch is not on par with luxury watches. Just keep that in mind if you want to um, buy this watch uh, and you think that uh, this is going to be a luxury uh, item. It is not. Uh, and another example is um, the movement, uh, which. To be honest, it's been um, has been processed very slightly by Seiko, so you will not be uh, you will not be seeing a lot of fine details in the movement. The cuts and the elements of the movement uh, are very rough, uh, to be honest. So nothing luxury about the movement. Uh, I'm not sure why Seiko decided to show this movement to have an exhibition case back. Probably uh, this would be interesting uh, for somebody who has always worn uh, quartz watches uh, and if this is your first mechanical timepiece then uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, thing to see how it works however it's not really uh, something worthy of display in my opinion uh, also uh, another thing that I would like to point out is um, the dial the dial is uh, something that uh, comes very close to a luxury watch uh, the dial is really exceptional, but the overall quality uh, is um, it's not there. It's just simply not there. I'll just give you an example. Um, I have this um, Hamilton here, which uh, resides in the pretty much uh, the same uh, price bracket. And when you when you take the watches in, in, into your hand, you notice how uh, better the build quality of the Hamilton is compared to the Seiko. So the, the price difference between the two is probably about $100. However, the build quality, I would say, is um, very different. The Hamilton feels much more sturdy. Even when you look at the movement, the parts in the movement, they look more sturdier. And uh, the way they are cut is uh, just uh, in, in, a, in a, f a final way. So I would say that, uh, yeah, uh, you, you are getting a watch for your money with, with this Seiko with exception to the dial, but I'll come, uh, I'll come back uh, later to the dial. Regarding um, luxury quality, yeah, just keep in mind that uh, this is not uh, there yet. And one more example for this is uh, if you check um, Seiko's website, but not uh, the American uh, website of Seiko, if you check the uh, Japanese website, you would see that the presage line has been split into two. So one is the upgraded section, where you find watches for about $2,000, which are part of the Presage line. And the other one is the Presage basic line, where you find this um, Seiko cocktail time. So even Seiko are uh, distinguishing the, uh, the, uh, that there are different qualities of the Presage line. And this is something that you need to keep in mind if you, if you want to have the watch. Interesting enough, uh, this uh, information is not um, it's not uh, given on the uh, US uh, website of Seiko. For some reason, they decided to, to just uh, market it as a presage line there. Okay, so moving on to the next um, next bit is the um, movement. Um, 
details and the, the way the movement works. So this movement is a fairly uh, basic movement from Seiko. However, it's not the uh, most primitive movement. Um, this movement offers a uh, hacking and also offers um, uh, hand winding. Yeah. Uh, the issue that I have here is that um, the operation of the movement is not very smooth. So the, the watch keeps a good time, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's keeping plus seconds a day, which I think is great for a watch of this price range. But as soon as you start um, winding the watch or trying to operate the watch, sometimes you get uh, a strange feeling in your hand as you rotate the crown. Uh, that, that there is a strange... Uh, change in the resistance of the crown sometimes depending on what you want to do but uh, just keep in mind that also the movement operation is not the smoothest and it's not on par with luxury watches so this is also something to keep in mind um, so the third thing i think you should know um, which uh, made a strong impression on me is uh, the crown so i'm um, I don't know what to tell you about the crown that uh, because I'm not sure if uh, this is normal or not. Uh, to my understanding, this is absolutely not normal. But if you look closely at the crown of this watch, you will see that there is a slight um, there is a slight gap between the case and the crown. And if you see in my uh, unboxing video, you would see that I struggle with a crown trying to figure out. Is it the position one of the crown? Is it the screw down crown which is not being screwed down? So what is happening with the crown? Uh, my my feeling is that just the stem of the crown is just way too long, or maybe the case hasn't got the uh, sufficient cuttings to accommodate the uh, the crown closer to it. But it's um, probably the biggest disappointment for me in this watch. Um, and I th initially I thought that okay I've I've got a defective um, a piece you know because maybe my piece is not working correctly no others have the crown correctly placed and I've looked online and what I see is that it's very strange but usually the official pictures uh, of this watch are not showing this but when you start looking at pictures from other people you do notice that their crown operate uh, that their crown positioning is uh, pretty much the same you have this uh, strange gap between the crown and the um, case um, and it's really something that is uh, annoying me it's not it's not making the watch um, dysfunctional or anything like this it's just that um, it kind of I wanted to get closer to the case, but it cannot. And it seems to me like that uh, they could just put a longer stem there, and uh, once they found out, they just said, oh, "Okay, doesn't matter. We'll just leave it like this." And to be honest, I, I've seen much cheaper Seikos that do not have this uh, crown working this way. Um, I'm not sure what what is the reason for this, because it looks like that. It is something that could be easily fixed by Seiko if they wanted to. I mean, when they were designing the model, they must have uh, thought about this. I'm not sure what the reason is. But just keep in mind that the crown, uh, the crown on your model might uh, stick out a little bit more than uh, what you're used to. As a comparison, I can again show you the Hamilton. Uh, and please keep in mind, this video is not about Hamilton is better watch and Seiko. I'll just uh, use it as a comparison base. As you can see, uh, the Hamilton crown is uh, absolutely uh, touching the case. Uh, and it's you cannot find any gap between the case and the crown when it's uh, in closed position. Um, I'm very interested to, uh, to understand if you've got this watch... How, uh, if you've got this watch, is your crown the same or it's uh, actually uh, better, uh, uh, it has better operation while in position newer, uh, in position uh, zero, sorry. So this is something that I would like to hear from you. I've also noticed that the first generation doesn't have this uh, crown gap between uh, itself and the case. So uh, just keep in mind that um, this is something that does not uh, make good impression on the watch. 
yeah certainly something that you wouldn't find in a luxury watch okay so moving on to the next um, part is the bracelet or the strap I haven't got the bracelet with, with me right now um, I've got uh, an aftermarket strap which is uh, Hirsch Hirsch in this uh, case I, I would have uh, wanted it to be a, a little bit darker than it is because at the moment the watch is uh, really uh, looking quite 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 a lot of uh, blue color in this watch um, but just wanted to give you some indication about this strap and the bracelet uh, keep in mind that uh, both of them are not uh, the original strap and the original bracelet are not uh, luxury items yeah they are good they're good bracelet and good strap but if you're used to a better quality watch you might be slightly uh, disappointed if you ha if you haven't owned a luxury watch strap or um, bracelet then you'll be just fine i think it's very important to um, think of where you're you're coming from if you're coming from a luxury um, experience with your other watches being a lot more expensive then you might find that the Seiko is not really on par but on the other hand if you're coming from um, cheaper watches you then then you'll be quite happy with what you get from this Seiko uh, keep in mind that this Seiko is positioned exactly on its place it's it's not the cheapest watch on the market but it's not also a luxury watch so this is this is the actual truth you, you, you'll be getting um, what you're paying for mostly um, but uh, let, let me just make one exception to this coming to my fifth and final point and this is the dial so the dial and the details on the dial are absolutely stunning and I think they uh, basically make up for everything else uh, every other um, drawback of this watch the dial is uh, exceptionally made the details on the dial are exceptional the indices the way they're polished are phenomenal so some of you might might would um, might prefer a dial with a loom but i'm telling you these indices are so well polished that even the slightest um, light uh, they'll pick on the slightest light and you, and you basically see um, what the time is because of the hands and indices are polished in such a uh, perfect to such a perfection the reflection of the dial uh, one of a kind i don't have to explain uh, to you how beautiful this feels uh, when you when you actually um, have your hands on the watch um, seku have just released another version of the dial it's not called a cocktail it's called something else i'm still about to to look into it but although this is not the newest model at the moment i think uh it's still worth consideration just because of the dial extremely extremely well made dial so anything else you might just won't forget uh, just to have this dial and pretty much this this was the reason why i got this watch because of the dial and uh, its perfection and uh, it's uh, the, the way it reflects the light and everything else so uh, I hope uh, those five things that you um, that I've given you uh, will help you make your decision. Um, as a as a kind of a final thought, I would say it's not a luxury watch, but because of the dial of this watch, it punches way above its um, weight, and yeah, it's it's a great little watch, and if you like it, you might as well go ahead and buy it. Um, let me let me know what you think and certainly let me know um, if you if you have this watch um, what is the situation with the crown on your piece because mine as you can see there is a slight gap here although it's not affecting the, the watch performance in any way okay that's all for now uh, have a great Christmas and a New Year's celebration and hopefully I'll see you soon bye